Today we're going to talk about why quick fixes for weight loss are possibly putting you at health risk and what to do about it. So did you know that in a lifetime, the average person is estimated to do 126 different diets at some point in their life? Now just think back to the last few years, every time you've changed your eating patterns or tried to follow something different or played around with the calories or macros and then reflect back to how you felt during that. So we're going to go through the ins and outs of what could potentially be happening for you. So we all know the weight loss industry is huge. It's currently valued at about 70 billion. And, and this study is actually taken from 2018. So it's probably a little bit higher. Um, it's really kind of fueled the media. Um, there's approximately 45 million people who attempt a different diet reg regime each and every year. So what to do about it if you're looking to lose fat, okay? There's a difference of losing weight and losing fat. Most people are stepping on a scale, uh, not happy with the number, and they want to lose weight. Well, there's a huge difference of losing body fat and losing weight because if you're just losing weight, typically what I've witnessed over the last 15 years is people instantly do a calorie deficit diet of some sorts, whether it's a keto diet, intermittent fasting, um, or, or really just calorie counting. It, it could be really anything, but what happens, let's just simplify it. What happens is if you just do an extreme calorie deficit diet and possibly introduce some cardio into the equation as well to try to throw you into a huge, bigger calorie deficit, yeah, instantly you're going to lose weight. Not just fat, you're also gonna lose muscle, which is gonna affect your metabolism. So why does that matter though? Well, the more muscle that you have on the body, it doesn't have to be big muscle, the more muscle that you have on the body, the higher your metabolism is gonna be. So as you're going through a huge calorie deficit program, you're losing, yes, body fat, but you're losing muscle as well. So that when that diet ends, and eventually it ends, typically on average what I've witnessed uh, and have read about is people can sustain a routine like that for maybe 12 weeks, sometimes longer, uh, but usually they're pretty disciplined for 12 weeks. And after that 12 weeks, they've completely slowed down their metabolism. So after those 12 weeks, maybe they look at their reflection in the mirror, maybe they step on the scale and they're happy with what they've achieved. However, now let's say, let's just use random numbers. Let's say their previous calorie intake, and, and I'm not just about calories in versus calories out, but we're gonna simplify it for this video. So let's say their calorie intake before this was 2,500 calories a day. And randomly, maybe they read an article or decided themselves to drop it to 1,500 calories a day. After that 12 weeks, now your metabolism is probably running around 1,500 calories per day. So anything extra that you eat on top of that is going to turn to fat again. And since you've also lost muscle mass, your metabolism actually might be a little bit slower than 1500 calories a day because if you now cut out maybe the cardio activities that you were doing and cardio is great for heart health and it's burning calories right then and there in the moment versus let's say like a resistance training style program a resistance training program would be with resistance bands body weight exercises free weights you name it it's adding resistance to the body and let's say it's squats so you're doing squats. You're burning a little bit of calories right then and there. Amazing. It's also great for the heart health because your heart rate's going up, coming back down as you're resting, but you're also tearing apart muscle fibers and they're forced to regrow stronger if you fuel it the correct way. So at the end of a resistance training program, your, your metabolism is actually going up because you're putting more muscle fibers on your body versus if you're just doing cardio, you're not necessarily putting on muscle. You're just burning calories right then and there. So 
what I would recommend doing, like let's say for myself, if I'm trying to lose body fat, and I'm gonna specify body fat versus weight, because again, we already covered that. If you wanna lose weight, you're probably also losing muscle. So I wanna keep as much muscle as possible. My goals are probably different than yours. Mine is to put on bulky muscle. It doesn't have to be that. Every, every training program is designed differently. However, we'll talk about the nutrition. First, I need to know what my metabolism is today. How do you do that? Well, like anything in life, you track and then you test and measure. So if I wanna find out what my current metabolism is today, I'm going to weigh myself daily, let's say at least for a week, same time of day, uh, maybe it's when I first get up, take some measurements, maybe uh, belly circumference, um, chest, arms, legs, whatever you want. Um, but be static with the data that you're logging. Then I'm gonna track everything that I'm putting into my body. So every, all the food. And I'm gonna reflect on that data at the end of the week. And let's say on average, the calories that I've been consuming every single day, and it's more than just calories, but we're simplifying for this, is let's say 3000 calories a day. Great. And I haven't lost weight. I haven't gained weight. My measurements are the same. That's probably what my metabolism is. Cool. So what do we do from there? Well, we might not even need to do a calorie deficit. We might need to restructure our eating. And you can talk to a professional. It could be somebody like a personal trainer, <clears throat> dietitian, nutritionist, whoever. Look and show them what you've been doing. And then they might readjust your macronutrients. So on average, then I'm gonna reflect back on that last seven days and figure out the average amount of protein I've been consuming every day, the average amount of carbs, and the average amount of fat. What I've witnessed in the past 15 years is whether your goals are to put on more muscle or lose body fat, when increasing the protein intake, it seemed to adjust body composition and lower body fat. So I would look at my nutrition again over the last week and maybe I've noticed that 20% of my intake has been protein um, and the other numbers let's just leave it like that right now so then I would increase it and what I found again everybody's a little bit different but what I found works really great for myself and for many people is if I've increased that protein intake from 20% to let's say 35% I'll start losing body fat. And why is that? Well, there, I mean, there's multiple reasons why, but let's just, again, simplify it for this video. Protein, if you've noticed, and um, if you had a higher protein meal, you feel full for longer. You feel satisfied for longer. You might even feel a little bit warmer. Your body temperature is warming up to break everything down. So if you have more protein throughout the day, you'll probably feel full longer you'll probably not feel the need to have random snacks throughout the day. I'm not saying random snacks are terrible. Um, however, you might not gravitate towards maybe a chocolate bar or something else that might get in the way of your fat loss goals. And when you have a decent amount of protein in the body, if you're adding a resistance training style program to it, then you're gonna see a lot of progress because again you're tearing apart the muscles to regrow stronger and with the right nutrition they'll regrow stronger in a more optimal way because they have the nutrients there to provide that growth versus if you're in a huge calorie deficit not consuming enough of the nutrients that you need it's going to be harder for the body to advance that growth so simplify what i found in the past and try it out yourself if you want. Um, I'm also going to post a link to our blog that goes more in depth about this. But if you want to try it out for yourself, again, test and measure like everything in life if you want to find results. Log what you're eating for the next at least seven days. Everything that you put into your body, log it. Go on the scale daily, same time. Write down all your measurements. Then again, Take waist ratio, hips, chest, um, arms, 
daily, same time of day. Take all that data, find the average of it, because the different days you might have different measurements, different weigh-ins. Um, you could be bloated one day and maybe not the next day, depending again what you're eating. You're gonna take all that data, you're gonna reflect it, you're gonna look at it, and then if you're not sure what to do, again, ask a professional. But if you wanna try it yourself, again, try apply, playing around with the macronutrients, see if you're not consuming that much protein, if you're consuming way too many carbs. And carbs are not an enemy, I'm not just saying that, but maybe everything in the day is pretty much carb-based. You still wanna have a well-rounded meal. You wanna have protein, carbs, and fat every sitting that you can, and make sure that there's enough fiber in there as well. So, super simple. It could be, um, again, everybody's different, but if you want a well-balanced meal, it could be something like some chicken, some broccoli, um, there could be some rice, maybe you want some pasta with it, who knows. Um, but again, logging everything and then testing and measure. So throughout that process, I would even journal. Um, at the first week that you're logging everything, journal how you're feeling throughout the day. It could just be quick random thoughts. You're feeling great, you're feeling tired, um, you are had a great sleep, log everything that you can think of. Then the next week, when you've adjusted your plan, see how you feel. And again, try it without going into a huge calorie deficit or a calorie deficit at all. Just play around with the macros. And if you're looking for physical activity, obviously I'm gonna recommend um, resistance training because we typically have sed sedentary lifestyles and our bodies are smart. So it's always trying to help us save energy. It's always trying to turn us into like a smart car or a Prius. So if we're sitting all day long, for example, the body's gonna be like, hey, they don't use their glutes that much anymore. Let's help them save energy and let's help it kill it off. So it's trying to kill off the muscle that we don't use. And how do we prevent that loss? Well, we just have to stimulate it. And a great way to stimulate it is through resistance training. So many different programs out there, everybody's different. If you're not sure what's right for you, ask a professional. Again, we help people worldwide all the time with these things. And again, we take the data that you've given us, manipulate that data so that it works for you. So if you have any questions at all, just comment below, take a look at our blog. I'll have more information on why these uh, fad diets are potentially causing health risks. And stay tuned to our next episode.